After a quick seven-day tour through the wonderful wilderness, magical towns, volcanoes, and hot springs of El Salvador, I decided to make use of a sweet deal I found on Google Flights. For just $100, I could fly over to Costa Rica to spend my last five days before being allowed back into Canada due to vaccination rules. Despite the name Costa Rica translating to rich coast, four out of my five days in this beautiful jungle country were kept within the capital city of San Jose. The majority of foreigners that come to Costa Rica usually just stay one or two days within the capital of San Jose and then plan their journey into the rich wilderness of the country. Every day, I would hear about adventures to volcanoes, beaches, jungles, mountains, and epic road trips from other travelers. But due to a logistical mess of planning vaccine tests, getting a good flight deal, and simply wanting to finally return home after being away for over one year, I may do with the time I had in Costa Rica. San Jose is least talked about by mostly everyone that comes to Costa Rica. It's a concrete jungle sprawled across a vast area that was previously a rich natural wilderness. During the season of June, the climate was temperate with mostly overcast and the occasional rain, thus providing a more relaxing atmosphere to walk around in a Central American country. Upon arriving from the airport, my hotel was in the Barrio Escalante neighborhood. In an earlier time, this was an upper-class residential area with a colonial-esque vibe. But as the Costa Rica economy evolved, it was gentrified into a hip spot for bars, clubs, restaurants, and hotels. I assumed that most of San Jose would be like Barrio Escalante, since Costa Rica is one of the more stable countries in Latin America. But as I ventured further into the center of San Jose, the buildings and atmosphere quickly shifted into a more concrete jungle feel. Every so often, you would come across a palatial structure that functioned as either a place of government, a public space, or renovated into a museum. The National Museum of Costa Rica provides an overview of the rich nature, history, and politics of Costa Rica. Here, you will get to play with butterflies, learn about a handful of species that inhabit Costa Rica, and ultimately venture through a section of the museum that explains why Costa Rica is one of the more stable democratic countries in Central America. Some interesting facts. After a failed military coup in 1948, the Costa Rican government decided to abolish the military and instead relying on support from the US government for any future political crises. Furthermore, Costa Rica spends almost 7% of the national budget on education, thus offering a highly educated workforce that also speaks English and Spanish interchangeably. Because of these decisions, among many others, Costa Rica resulted in a relatively safe country for both its citizens and for the massive influx of tourists that come every single day. While visiting the National Museum, I made a new friend, and she suggested visiting the Carrara National Park, just an hour and a half outside of San Jose. The park itself consisted of a pre-designed trail that cut right through the forest for a casual stroll away from the everyday life of a concrete jungle. Yet, just 10 minutes after entering the park, it started to rain heavily, thus bringing meaning to the term rainforest. Two hours within the park was enough to see several species of creatures you wouldn't see on a typical day in the city. These included small, potentially poisonous frogs, millipedes, large fungal growths, massive kapok trees, and a brown snake and growths that I haven't seen before. The following day, my friend made plans to visit La Fortuna, so at the last minute, I decided to join her. Despite Google Maps indicating a two and a half hour trip, expect more of a three to four hour bus ride since the roads are always blocked with slow moving traffic. But at the same time, you get to see some of the beautiful towns along the way. La Fortuna is known for its beautiful volcano that sits in the background, and despite wanting to climb it, apparently this was illegal for whatever reason. Instead, we visited some of the more local and commonly visited locations, such as the river with a swing rope just outside La Fortuna town. Then we hopped into a van and went over to the La Fortuna Free Natural Hot Springs and ended the night meeting other backpackers and travelers in Salina Hostel. Socializing with so many backpackers made me reconsider spending so much time alone in a hotel in San Jose. So the following day, I hopped on two buses back to San Jose, which took about four hours. And instead of staying in a hotel for my last two days, I booked a bed in Salina Hostel in San Jose. 
this was probably the highlight of my experience in Costa Rica, since I hadn't stayed in a hostel in two years. The remaining two days were spent on doing a PCR test for returning to Canada, socializing and exploring San Jose with other travelers, and having a drink or two at nighttime. Ultimately, my Costa Rica trip didn't consist of many beaches or jungles or volcanoes like most travelers who visited, but the experience was just as fun because I met really fun people along the way, even if it was primarily in the concrete jungles of Costa Rica. If you liked this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and maybe share what your past or future Costa Rica experience might look like. And as always, Leonidas here and salute.